buddy Greg Pallas, the investigative journalist, author, filmmaker, and economist. His latest film is Vigilante, Georgia's vote suppression hitman. GregPallast.com is his website. Greg underscore Pallast over on Twitter. And uh, Greg, tell me about uh, Jerome Powell, the lifelong Republican and uh, former investment bankster uh, who uh, J Donald Trump put in charge of the Fed. And uh, leeches. Leeches? Leeches, <laughs> yes. Well, um, you know, uh, I'm, I've taken off my uh, investigative reporter hat. I used to be have a real job. I was an economist. You know, I lectured at the London School of Economics with Joe Stiglitz and others. But and so we're all, all my friends in the in the actual economics biz are stunned that what Powell is doing is medieval. He's like applying, like, you know, in the medieval times, they'd apply leeches to uh, with the idea that that would cure you of diseases by sucking your blood. Instead, uh, so once again, he's unleashed the blood suckers um, by saying that we're, as we are speaking, they're announcing a quarter percent increase in interest rates. It's 5% over the past year that he ra raised interest from nearly zero under Trump to 5% under Biden. The problem is that Mr. Powell does not understand, as every economist I've talked to uh, has said the same thing. He's curing the wrong disease. What he's doing is he's blaming the victims. He's saying that their that employment is too high and wait and workers asking for too much in wages. Every other economist is saying that's called a demand pull inflation. Let's get a little technical. Uh, demand pull means that there's just your wages are too high and and people are bidding up prices of products. That's not what's happening. We have something called a supply squeeze inflation. Right. Um, and apparently, Mr. Powell did not realize that no one told him that there was this invasion by Russia of Ukraine. That led to a massive increase in energy prices. And as you know, energy prices go through everything. Uh, fertilizer, food, the guy that brings you your greasy uh, Chick-fil-A sandwich from DoorDash. Energy runs through everything in our economy. It's about 40 percent of, of the total pricing in our economy is affected by oil prices. In addition, Ukraine was one of the world's biggest exporters of grain, edible oils, and fertilizer, causing a massive spike in food prices. And then, I don't know, I guess Mr. Powell didn't know about this thing called COVID, which caused China, in particular the port of Shanghai, to shut down. That meant that we were short of all kinds of supplies, especially um, low-level uh, computer chips, meaning we had uh, hundreds of thousands of idle, finished new cars, that couldn't hit the market because they didn't have the chips, so we ended up bidding up the price of used cars. Uh, cars and trucks are about 8% of the uh, consumer price index. So in other words, what Powell is doing by raising interest rates is he's attacking the victims of inflation. Workers cannot be the source of inflation because in the last two years, I just calculated that what cost you $100 two years ago in March this past March now costs you $114. That's a 14% inflation rate, 14% increase in prices for the average person um, in the last two years, whereas salaries and wages have only gone up by 9.5%. If you do the math, that's <laughs> your simple arithmetic, that's a 5.5% cut. Wages are not driving inflation. Inflation is crushing wages. Right. In fact, it comes out to about a four thousand dollar year loss, as is always the case, power. by the way. Yeah, right. And so what's happened here is that it's not wages which are pushing up inflation. But of course, the Pandorati have decided the only way to cure inflation is this medieval and discredited theory. In fact, in, in the in the economics biz, it's called the Phillips curve. The Phillips curve says that if you raise unemployment, if you put people out of work, if you slash salaries, you'll bring down inflation. I thought the Phillips curve was completely discredited. I completely. realized you know, fact, it, was, actually, it was orthodoxy 30 yeah. years ago. but Yes, yeah, so if you go to gregpalace.com, you can get the full breakdown. But there was a wonderful paper issued last year called Is the Phillips Curve Dead or Just Mortally Wounded? And that was put out by the Federal Reserve Board. The economists at the Federal Reserve Board think that this whole process is completely insane. So in other words, Powell's own economists think he's bonkers and that he right. what he's doing is he's worsening the situation it's, see i don't think totally he's bonkers cruel. at all greg i you know in 1997 alan greenspan who was then the fed chair told mm -hmm. told the uh, wall street journal uh and i quote i'm quoting from memory but i'm pretty sure it's accurate 
He said, my main job is to maintain a certain necessary minimum level of worker insecurity, end quote. And what that meant was, you know, whenever workers start getting too big for their britches, we're going to raise interest rates, cause, you know, a whole bunch of people to lose their jobs, and those pesky workers will shut up. Now, he's not talking about the CEO workers. He's talking about working people. And, and so you've got that, you know, as, as uh, orthodoxy among Republican Fed chairs. And Jerome Powell is a Republican Fed chair. Donald Trump put him there. And then on top of that, you know, uh, Republicans know well, 10 out of the last 11 recessions happened during Republican presidencies. And, and uh, when people, when first-term presidents run for re-election during a recession, just ask Jerry Ford, just ask Jimmy Carter, just ask George Herbert Walker Bush, they lose. I think Jerome yes. Powell is intentionally sabotaging um, uh, Joe Biden. I think that's the uh, beginning, middle, and end of the whole damn thing. What say you? Well, I can't reach into the tiny mind of Jerome Powell. All I do know is, is that he's punishing the victims of the inflation. And actually, one of the things that, that, we should, that you have brought up, which I think is very important here, Powell is part of that chattering classes. He doesn't believe that the guys at, at his local country club are the source of the problem, that they're the perps. In fact, I was actually shocked that the Wall Street Journal repeated what I just said in my article if you, at gregpowles.com, which is part of this is corporate greed. Even the yep. journal said that. We have in Japan, for example, I calculated that uh, prices for the producers in Japan went up 10 percent, but they only passed on 30 percent of those costs in higher prices to consumers in Japan. So they only recovered one out of three dollars. In the U.S., every dollar of supplier costs that rose, U.S. corporations increased prices by two dollars. In other words, U.S. corporations are double charging the increases in their own costs. So what we have is, and why are they doing this? Because they now have this moment where they have this tremendous market power, which has been handed to them by Vlad Putin, by uh, Xi Jinping closing down China, and by MBS, uh, the, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, who has been using the war in Ukraine to, of course, crank up prices through the uh, oil and energy prices through the roof. Right. And so who also, US by the way, wants Joe Biden to lose his election. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you have to understand there's tremendous politics here. I, whether, I don't know what Powell's intent is. I know what the effect is. And okay. by the way, this quarter percent interest, you do it, get ready for the foreclosures. Um, we, the average mortgage in America is about $430,000. 10% of those are uh, adjustable rate mortgages. Those people are getting hit with a $1,400 a month mortgage increase. Imagine if you're a small business wow. with a line of credit. Imagine your credit cards, auto loans. Uh, my neighbor is about to have his car foreclosed because he can't make these new higher payments. This is no joke. Wait for the wave of foreclosures. This is what Powell thinks you ought to do is throw workers and virgins into the volcano and maybe the gods of inflation will be happy. You know, I was just talking with the economist Nomi Prince. You know, she was the managing director of Goldman Sachs. So she's been inside and outside, knows it inside and outside. And she just says simply, Powell's an idiot. But mm. maybe, like you say, he isn't. Maybe his he knows exactly what he's doing, which is um, removing Joe Biden from office. That's going to be the effect. Yeah. But, of course, it, whether that happens or not, there's going to be an awful lot of, uh, of uh, economic corpses yeah, um, this is, these are these leftover Trump Trump humpers. I mean, you know, you've got Louis DeJoy at the post office. You've got yeah. Jerome Powell at, at the Fed. You've got Chris Ray at the FBI. And none of them are working, in my opinion, uh, you know, in a way that um, is consonant with the, with the values and, and uh, priorities of America right now. They're, they're all, in my opinion, working for their own agendas. You know, I mean, over at the post office, uh, DeJoy is trying to kneecap the post office so that his buddies, uh, you know, the, the private delivery companies will make money. He owns one of them. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> well, you know, well, what you're saying is, is this is what he is doing. He's helping. Powell is working for the members of his club. Don't forget, yeah. the Federal Reserve is an organization not only of government officials, but officially of bankers who are on the reserve board. That's right. And, Jay, and they, you know, are remember, the, Jamie, they are the Fed, the banks. They own it. Right. So Jamie Dimon. OK, Jamie Dimon's uh, uh, Chase Manhattan just hit. It, the highest profits it's had in its history. It's rolling in it because they're still paying basically zip on your savings and on your deposits while charging you uh, exorbitant amounts for higher interest, 
care of, of the blessings of the Fed. Right. And the result is that, again, the banks are making out like bandits. This idea that everyone is hurt by inflation is, is nuts. There are victims and there are perpetrators. And again, we have banks. For example, I noticed that the banks are not raising um, uh, interest rates for deposits. The German government is, is about to hit the, uh, the, uh, their banks for $40 billion in underpayments to depositors. So you're getting huh. – they're, they're, not, they're not raising the rates on what they pay you. They're just raising the rate on what you pay them. And right. that's what Powell is pushing here. He is not dealing with the question of what is causing the inflation, which is supply-side problems – uh, where we, you know, again, now, but, and by the way, because some of these supply side problems are working their way out, inflation's almost over. You know, the producer prices in the past two months have actually declined. They've gone negative. So the, the, yeah, it's declined. So we have negative costs for businesses who are charging more, who are changing the price tags on the shelves. Right. And Powell isn't discussing that. What we need to do is have something that increases our supply and you can't punish the victims of inflation that will not help inflation and by the way apologies to dr professor phillips because in fact he said the phillips curve never ever said if you raise unemployment you're going to cut inflation that's a complete me even me misrepresentation of what he said so this misrepresentation is guiding powell yeah, but again but it might just be a convenience he's he's pulled this old dead theory off the shelf yeah He's As a, uh, Mr. Phillips, for a political purpose. Dr. Phillips right. is no longer around to defend himself, right. if I recall correctly. <laughs> That's right. He, he's been a bit gone for a few decades. Oh, yeah. man. So uh, we're, we're talking with Greg Pallast. Uh, Greg, we're going to hit a break in just a second here, but uh, the investigative journalist, uh, a, a former economist, who actually wrote the foreword to my book, The Hidden History of Neoliberalism, How Reaganism Gutted yes. America, and tells the story of when he when he hung out with Milton Friedman. Uh, my, my mentor. <laughs> he, indeed. It was an amazing story. So, uh, the book. Greg, yeah, thank you so much. And Greg's uh, new movie, Vigilante, Georgia's uh, voter supp Vote Suppression Hitman. Check it out at gregpalace.com. Greg, thanks so much for dropping by. You're very welcome. Always a pleasure having you and an honor. We'll be back. It's 18 minutes past the hour.